Hi, Guido Fox here. Welcome by a new book report. Today I want to discuss with you this amazing book of our show, The Cessation of Mind. The Cessation of Mind. That's very important, right? If we want to have a healthy mind, a healthy spirit, a healthy energetic being, we have to cessation um, the uh, mind, um, dissolving the mind. We have to learn how the mind works and we have to learn how to use the mind in a properly way and not that the mind is using you. And in the most cases, the mind is using you and you are not using your mind and your mind on a proper way. You are a slave of your mind. You are a slave of all the thoughts in your mind. All those stressful thoughts, right? What to do next during the day? What to do tomorrow? What to do next month? When we have our next holiday? Constantly, constantly we are thinking about the future not only the next hour or what we have to do at the end of the day we have to do the wash we have to do the cleaning we have to see our friends we are constantly in our chattering mind. We are constantly chattering and we are not so evolved that we are in the meditative state where your mind is going to your chakras. You can't change your mind. You can't change your mind more efficient, more spiritual, more meditative that you can transform your mind and the using of your mind in a very, very beautiful, peaceful and concentrated way that is the cessation of the mind is that you going from the future constantly stressed constantly running on the streets from a to b you go to the now And not the Eckhart Tolle now, but the Osho now. And that's a very, very difference. The Eckhart Tolle now is false. The Eckhart Tolle way is not really aware, not really centered way, is not the blissful way, is not the ecstatic way. The Eckhart Tolle way is pure the same mind. 
is not the changing of your mind. It's not that you use your mind on another way. Oh, I have to be in the now. I have to be in the now. Now. Now is important. No, now. It's still stressful. It's still unconsciousness. I can make a planning for the future or for the next day with full awareness. I can be with my mind in the past with full awareness. I can be in the now also with full awareness. But on a very peaceful, meditative, centered way. So people live in a deep illusion. They are live in a false reality. They are still in the stressful Aryan mind. Page 18. We are going to a teacher, a spiritual teacher, and his name is Patanjali. And Patanjali was a spiritual teacher, and Osho were talking about him to become a higher being, a higher evolved person. And how you can step out of the crowd as a light being, as a peaceful being, as a compassionate being. And Patanjali was a very, very mathematics guy he was very exact and we always have the feeling spirituality is kind of somewhere above us and something strange but this guy was into mathematics and he was very, very exact. Prices. And one thing, if you want to evolve higher as a human being, if you want to step out of the crowd with all those stress, bullshit things, what they do, living an unnatural life is that you going into spiritual psychology and a lot of people going into meditation 
the most 15 minutes per day that's less to less but still they are not going into spiritual psychology and i read the oeuvre of hawkins and if you read hawkins the thousands of thousands of page of information about spirituality is mentioned there it's about dissolving the ego the very very complex ego and also in the work of hawkins i give seminars about him it's about how to dissolve all the fears what you can have in your mind all the fears all the jealousies all the pride and arrogance mechanisms in your mind All the shames in your life will be dissolved. So you have to have a mirror in your life to grow to higher enlightened stages. Mirrors, good coaches. Or read the work of Hawkins and do self evaluation most people have no time for that or they don't read or they read a half page per day before they going to bed so or show mention patanjali because also you have to create a double attack on the very very complex ego I tell to you very complex because I gave seminars about it. The spiritual ego is very, very complex and is related to all your miseries. So you have to resolve the ego with the double attack of meditation and the knowledge about how the ego works and then if you know how the ego works and you're not so still in meditation then you are already in a state of non-misery a state of non-misery a mental state of non-misery and if you reach that state of non-misery then the door will open to the chakra experiences the different chakra experiences so your mental state and the knowledge about the work of Hawkins PhD is very important for your spiritual growth And then can I, as a spiritual master, create order in you? Page 20. I don't learn you the simple things. Letting go. I heard so many teachers are saying you have to let go it's too simple i bring order in your mental state in your mental thoughts 
I am here to bring order in you and create fastness. I learn you the trick, the knack, the mind knack to experience the higher spiritual stages, what you can reach in life. If you are opening up, if you are becoming awake and you are opening the mustard seed, the right spot near the middle of your chest, the mustard seed where Jesus we're talking about. If you're opening that up, that spot, that ecstatic spot, that blissful spot in your body, then you are fearless, you are strong, you are fearless, you are not experience any fear anymore. Fear on the street, fear in your relationships, fear in your work. So all the fears will be dissolved in the mustard seed. There was Jesus we are talking about, he was talking about the mustard seed. Ramko in Dutch. If you reach higher enlightened stages and you grow out of the mediocre development of the crowd in their social skills and their emotional skills and their addictive skills and you grow out of that stages misery will disappear but also happiness will disappear it is not if you become enlightened that you will smiling all the day and laughing all the day. You smile more and you laugh less. It's a constant way of being. You're more constant. There are no peaks and no lower stages there. You are become stable. Stable a little bit smiling. But your misery is gone. And people want always new and change, always something new and wants to change. So much political parties use change as a word because people love the word change. 
But they don't change. They don't want to change. The ego doesn't want to change. But they like it. People like it. Change and new and things. Because they think, oh wow. If the world and the surroundings are gonna change, then maybe I become a little bit more happier. And if the outside world is changing, then I ha don't have to work. about myself and I'm very skeptical the most people don't want to change the most people want to stay how they are they will want to live their miserable lives in relationships in sexuality in career, they're addicted to their suffering. You can be addicted to your suffering, addicted to your mental suffering. And people search always problems and dramas. People don't want to change. The most people don't want to change. They search coaches who are too nice for them. Or who can handle them. Because they don't want to change. They tell to themselves that they work on themselves. And to share it to the outside world. Look how good I am. I work on myself. But the most people are not very dedicated to go into spiritual, personal development. How more and more I grow in spirituality, how less and less I want to read. The most book seems useless, not interesting anymore. Because how can you write something down if you are not enlightened? What's the value of your words? if you don't see the reality how it is. So all the books I read seems useless and useless except or show of course. And the more and more I become spiritual, uh, more and more I like to be silent and listening to myself, to my inner self. And now less and less I like to talk. What I want to say is that you're becoming more and more natural. In the nature, you lived in the nature a long, long time ago. Where there are books? Did you have to talk all the day to each other? You had to speak eight hours long? No, right. So, if you live more natural eyes, why to talk so much? Talk your bullshit? Why to fright? Why to read so much? It's all society implanted. Look how much I read, how intellectual I am. 
all those people with the books behind the skirm to show off how much they read at a certain moment it become less and less interesting and you enjoying more the listening and you enjoying more the silence the silence of life it will be more valuable thank you for watching to this spiritual video and i wish you a wonderful day hi hi